Um, welcome. I'm Hannah, and in this video we're going to be talking about the palette that ColourPop recently put out with the Twilight franchise and creating our own indie single shadow version loosely based off of that. This video is actually a collab with Catherine of Catherine B Beauty. I'm so excited to be collabing with her again. I had posted on Instagram just giving my little two cents about the ColourPop palette and she suggested us doing this kind of duping video as a collab. I think that's ultra exciting because we'll get to see my like imagination, like my recreation of the palette, but then also you can go over to her channel and see her recreation of the palette. I'm gonna have her video linked down below. You can look at it now, you can look at it later. Either way, make sure you look at it. I'm really excited to watch her video also. If you watch my content, you're probably familiar with Catherine already, but just in case for some weird reason you're not, she posts a lot of delicious overhead footage of indie single shadows. I love her cheerful demeanor, but she's also critical when need be. She did say in a recent video that she's planning to do more content outside of Indie Single Shadows this year also, which I am personally really excited to watch. Really anything she puts out is always a delight to watch and I definitely recommend her channel if you're a fan of mine and you haven't checked it out yet. So, Twilight. I was intrigued by this palette because of the unique color story and not because of the IP because Confession Time I've never seen a Twilight movie. I have, however, watched every video that Nick DiRamio has done on the Twilight movies, and if you're not familiar with their channel, I definitely recommend you watch those also. So I'm also just gonna link their first Twilight video down below. It's a good time. I like seriously recommend you also watch <laughs> Nick's videos if you're interested in kind of like poking fun at pop culture and movies and stuff. So that's the extent of my Twilight knowledge. I feel like when the movies came out, like at that point in my life, I was too cool to watch them. I was more into like smoking cigarettes outside of Subway Sandwich Shop with 30 of my closest friends, but now I'm not too cool to watch them. So it's possible that like next time I get like room bound sick, I'll watch them all because the idea of Twilight as a whole is so intriguing to me. It's so like inherently campy and I'm into that. So let's just switch over to the overhead footage of creating the palette. Going into this, I really wasn't sure if I had anything to look similar to the palette because it feels so far out of my comfort zone. But I think that is what makes this kind of exercise a lot of fun. So let's just switch over to the palette making process. So the palette is a 15 pan. I'm probably gonna end up putting it in here, but for the time being, I know I'm going to pull out more shades that I'll end up using. So I'm going to use this Tarte palette as my kind of like building ground, my collection plate. So I haven't actually looked at the palette at all today, I don't think. I will look at the palette, but I feel like the thing that sounds the most fun and creative to me is kind of doing this off of vibes, at least to start. You know, I don't think the palette from memory is the perfect, most usable palette for me. I think it's something that intrigues me because it's different from what I have. But I've learned time and time again, especially most recently from the Chucky palette, that being drawn to something because it's unique doesn't mean it's going to last and be loved in my collection. So basically, I'm not trying to build like an exact dupe. I'm curious what I can do with my collection to have a similar idea, but also be more tailored to me and more exciting to me. And a little bit later, we will kind of cross-reference in the palette and make those separating decisions consciously, but I just feel like it's funner now to do my first run through my palettes just off of vibes. <laughs> That's it. So here in this palette, I have Dandelions Cosmetics, Copacetic, Electrum, Sydney Grace, Glaminatrix. I know Sydney Grace has so many awesome cool tone shadows. That's why I feel like Catherine's palette's going to be so different from mine because I know she has a lot of Sydney Grace and my Sydney Grace collection is not like that. I think I will pop out this one for now. I don't know if it'll end up being used, but this is Keep It Fun. It's a shadow that's like not super intense or anything, but every time it comes to decluttering, I just feel like I like this. And this kind of like murky, sagey green could fit in. I'm not going to swatch everything, but just a couple other things I want to pull out. I have these two light mattes from 
Dandelion Cosmetics. I probably will just choose one of them, but this I probably will make more in line with the palettes. I know there's some kind of light transition color. So yeah, I'm just going to pull those two out for now. I also have Tiramisu from Dandelion's Cosmetics. This is kind of like, I, like I think of it more like a satiny shade because it's not as shimmery as other shadows, but it's like so elegant, so pretty. And I feel like this could work. I don't know. Just vibes. Copacetic Ball Drop. I just talked about that recently. I'm going to pull out, I think this is Majestic from Glaminatrix. This is like a really pretty, interesting neutral a little bit more elegant and less like wabam pow also, but still really pretty. And again, especially this first round, first palette I'm opening, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> From my Pretties for Your Face and Shine by SD shades, I feel like there's a lot here too. Is this a bad idea that I'm doing it this way? Because I just want to pull out everything. I have Mirkwood that I just got from the Glam Smitty collab. I also think I want to pull out Bizarre. This shadow is from the first M. Jones 5018 and Bizarre Volta collab, and I had decluttered it a long time ago, but it just kind of got forgotten about. Like, <laughs> it was in its package off to the side for a long time, and I just pulled it out at the end of last year because I was, like, trying to declutter because I knew I'd be doing my inventory, and I just swatched with my eye, and I was like, I feel like I want to give it another chance. At the time of getting it, I only wanted really bam pow shadows, and I'm more open now to shadows that are less bam pow. And this is like a weird shifty one that's not that like textured or anything, but I feel like the weirdness could be fun. I don't know. Ooh, I also, I put Lothlorien from the Glam Smitty collab in here because I felt like I wouldn't be using it on my inner corner. It's more of like a lid shadow for me, and I think that could work in this palette too. And then from Pretties for Your Face, I want to pull out Moby because of course I do, and a burr, both two like pretty murky satiny shadows. From my Luxy palette, there's a lot of options in here too. Yeah, this is hard. Maybe I'm maybe I'm making it harder by being so directionless. I think I'm gonna aim to find like a neutralish shadow in here and like a murky greeny shadow. I don't want to pull out everything, but I feel like there could be something good in here. I do want to pull out Morning Rain. It's Washington. It rains a lot in the in the Twilight verse. And this is like an interesting murky teal to grass green shadow that I really like for my lower lash line. Ooh, I'm also going to pull out Wicked Witch. This is one of my favorite Luxy shadows. So underrated. Such like a beautiful flip with like a berry base. Hard to capture in a swatch, but I know from use that it's amazing. Let's pull out this one also. This is Jeepers Creepers. And this is like a really pretty, shiny, greeny neutral. And then let's look over here. This is kind of speaking to me. Is this abracadabra. You know, something murky. I think I'm just going to keep saying murky this entire video, but it's like an interesting neutral. It has a little bit of like bluishness to it, but also some warmth. What are you? Andromeda. I like the look of this, but I feel like I need to cut myself off. I'll come back to this if I need to, but I just feel like there's so many Luxy shadows that could fit into my broad idea of what goes in this palette. And I'm also nervous that this is getting too, like, green and neutral, which I don't think is the essence of the palette. I think it has more, like, silvers in it. It has some teals and forest greens. So I'm going to try to keep that in mind as we look through the next couple of single shadow palettes. My inner corner shadows are in here. I definitely want to avoid things that are too warm. Oh, I have this that I depotted from the Shine by SD Treasure palette. This is Prize, and it has like a teal flip. I love a teal flip in my inner corner, and I've been so excited to use that more ever since I decluttered the rest of the palette and kept that. I also want something greenish, because I feel like there's so many green things going on in there. I'm going to pull Chandelier from Cleona. The thing I love about this shadow is it works so perfectly for my inner corner, but it also just has enough, like, substance to it that it looks so pretty all over my lid. So I'm going to include that too. It looks so, like, wet also. I love it. Uh, 
Okay, and here I have Terra Moons and all of my larger pans, which are Give Me Glow and JD Glow. I'm actually seeing so many possibilities within these Terra Moon shadows. I have this matte Atlantis, and I'm pretty sure there is a blue element in the palette that I've just so far completely neglected. So I'm going to toss this one in. Bellatrix. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but something about this seems right. I guess it also has Bella in it, and it has this, like, spooky bluishness. Don't ask me to explain that. It just seems spooky in this moment. Shattered Stars. This seems like it would fit. Enceladus. I could see that. M51. This could be a better green than those Lucy greens because this has like a really pretty purple shift to it. And I always forget to wear it, but I'd like to. Ooh, and then Haze of the Moon. This is a really pretty neutral and it looks pretty silverish. Like it's more of a silverish interesting neutral than most of my other interesting neutrals. So I definitely want to include this one. Not quite what I imagined so far, but I know we're coming up on some big reserves of mattes, and I think that will kind of change the overall look of the palette. Ooh, Divina Shades. Okay, two that spring out of me right away is Earthshine. This is like a super metallic, like almost like a coin, but it has a bluishness to it. And then Thalassic. This one's like a really pretty kind of like understated green copper reddish shadow. And then I have some other Davina shadows here. I feel like I have to just toss in Mystic Moon Pie. Who knows if any of these will stay, but it's like that silverishness, but it also has that warm base that I'm kind of like playing with a little bit here. I don't know if the ColourPop palette has anything that's like multi-chrome or duochrome, but I feel like Twilight is kind of a spooky movie, and multi-chromes are spooky because they have a shift to them, you know? Or maybe you don't. I don't know if I'm making sense. From these Davina mattes, I want to include Suki for now. It's kind of like a grayish shadow. There's two Davina mattes that I think would be perfect for here, but I actually don't have anymore. I, I once had and I decluttered, but there's this like grayish purplish color. I think it's called Ethereal. And that I just, I didn't really have a way that I liked using it. And that was at a time that I was really trying to downsize my collection. So I decluttered it and I don't regret that, but I do feel like now if I still had it, I might be more willing to keep it around for instances where I want to BYOP because it's so unique. And then also they have another one called Lucid, I believe, which was a very grayed out teal. It was like a sad ocean. And that I think was kind of similar to something I already had, but I would be more likely to use the other thing. So again, it's fine, but I feel like if I had those two, they would really complement the vibe. I also... I have all of these Lucy mattes that usually I'm so eager to put these into any palette because I love the formula of them so much. But something about these Dandelions mattes just feel like they might work better for it. And I don't see these mattes offering anything different that I want represented. Okay, and here I have Adept and Menagerie. I should have made this a bigger palette for the decision making because there's still so many more I want to pull out. This is Ink Defense from Menagerie. Really pretty. This guy tucked in here. This is one that came to mind when I saw the color story. I think this is far brighter than the ColourPop palette, but I never use this shade, and I'm, I'm interested about the idea of having a palette with this in it. This is the shade Tide Pool, and I think something like this shade could be the difference between this being like a brown and green palette to it being like a unique Twilight palette, one that I wouldn't have ever put together anything close to similar to it without this prompt. And then from the Adept side, I have this matte. This is ACM19, kind of like a grungy green. I don't know if it's going to stay, but I like the idea of it. And then this one I know doesn't have a label on the back. Doesn't matter anyway. Adept no longer sells their singles, but I like this one. It has like a nice wet look, kind of like a lighter version of that 
Menagerie ink defense, lighter and sheerer. And then I have my color pop mats. I think I'm going to pull out this green. I I might like this green more, but I don't know. Something about the smaller pan. I just feel like I'd rather... Ugh, would I? No, I'm putting in the smaller pan. I'm going to do what's right for the palette, even though I'm going to dislike the look of it all put together a little bit more. I need to like get over this hump of feeling like those little pans look dinky. I also want to pull out Chic Happens because this is a very like grayed out tone. If you remember, I had a whole video where I did a look with this and I topped it with like an iridescent and I loved that. And I'm excited about the prospect of this palette being another reason for me to do that. Okay, I'm also going to throw in this deep dark brown. Deep dark browns come in handy. And I'm going to throw in a couple other neutrals too, just because maybe they'll end up being better than those dandelions ones. And the tones seem pretty, you know, right, right in the middle, right at neutral. We're almost done our first go through, but this is an overflowing palette. The final one to look through are my Cleona shadows. Is there a better way to store these other than repanning them? Because I look at this right now and I'm like, if I have to get out a shadow that's like back here, I have to move every other pan to do it. You can't just like, you know, stick your finger in like you can when they're circles and they have a little bit of room around them. I'm just being lazy, but whatever. Yeah, let's pull out carving love carving. You can't go wrong with it. Really pretty interesting neutral with some teal to it and a burgundy base. I also want to pull out Bloodline. The name also somehow feels fitting. And I don't know if I'm going to want anything, like I don't know if I need other dark shadows, but Solder feels like it could be cool. Okay, and we'll do Vault. <laughs> I don't know if this one will stay, especially because I know wearing it, it has like a pretty strong pink reflect, but I like it. And, you know, putting this palette together, I want it to be something that I wear. And that in particular is a shadow that I'll be excited to reach into this palette specifically for. Okay, so here's what I'm working with so far. I'm going to switch to workshopping on top of the Luxy palette because I feel like this big pile of indie single shadows is destined for tragedy. Okay, so I finally have pulled up the picture of the palette for me to reference. I'm just going to post a better picture of it on the screen and look at this off camera. But it's funny, I feel like the, the ideas of the color story I do have represented here, but it's so concise to almost be boring. Like, I look at this blob of shadows I have in front of me, and I feel like the abundance is part of what makes it so beautiful. This looks very watered down. There's just that one, like, true rich green in the center one dark green matte. I guess there's two, two or three, I can't really tell depending on the lighting, light shimmer shadows. And I think the main things that draw me to the palette that I don't have in front of me are the particular shades of some of the mattes. That like sagey green, kind of like a mid to deep toned sagey green is so unique. And then the one under it, it looks like a denim blue that neighbors gray and also neighbors purple. That's pretty. But, you know, I have similar shades, and I'll use that. I think I first want to assemble 15 of these to be more similar to this 15. And then from there, I want to extrapolate and make it a little bigger. Because as I said, I think having so many rich, similar, but different shimmery tones all together is part of the appeal of what's in front of me. Catherine and I didn't discuss in detail the, the brief for this. It was like a self-imposed thing that I thought I would just copy the layout and stick to 15 pans. But I think if I want to make this true to me, which I do, my palette will be bigger.
Okay, so this is my more like one to one rendition of the palette. I took some liberties. If I really wanted to match it up as much as possible, I would have gone back to the drawing board and find more of like a true green for the center shadow. I also used that Sydney Gray shimmer here in place of that sagey matte. If I wanted to keep it a matte, I would have done this adept shade, but I thought the tone of this Sydney Grace one was more true to the palette. I also used carving here. I kind of use this as like a free spot for a neutral. I didn't have anything in front of me that looked exactly like the neutral in the palette. So I thought, I want carving. And this works. You know, this is different than what I would make. It does have that kind of like murky, stormy vibes going on. But it's not enough. It doesn't give me the same feels as my big pile of shadows did. So I think, yeah, I want to take this and I want to expand it to 25. Maybe I will end up swapping some things out. I didn't give this like that much thought, but maybe not. Maybe I will just leave this and add on. Let's see. I don't know where I had gotten this color from, but I still feel like it fits the vibe. I also wonder if whatever picture I was looking at when I thought a shade like this would fit is a different one than the one I'm looking at now. Because I found that with ColourPop that like their swatches can vary so much that it can be kind of hard to like understand what it is. And it's not impossible that like the official ColourPop page is posting something with a filter to make it look more moody and twilighty. This is all subject to change. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of messing around here. Oh, if I keep up with what I'm doing now, then I have two spots left, and that is difficult. Let's look at some of the options. I didn't put in either of these kind of like black, not black, blue-brown pigment, you know, like the colors kind of based off that iconic MAC look. I don't have either of those, and they would go, but in a way, it almost feels too on the nose. It almost feels too much like this palette in a blender, but maybe that is what I want. Because it's not like I want to go too off the rails. I think this mid-tone matte looks way too warm in the context of this palette. I wouldn't mind having a mid-tone matte just to have an option to deepen up the crease. Realistically using this, I will use that crease color every time. But I could get creative for the optional deepening it up. And also Moby is another option. Bizarre from Shine by SD. This almost feels like too, too bright, too like off for it. And I feel like I used my my bright allotment for that menagerie shade. This is tough too because like I need something to go right smack dab in the middle of it. This is tough. I don't think it's going to be copacetic ball drop. It's not going to be this light matte or this light matte. I don't think it's going to be this green. I already kind of decided against it for the more curated one. I feel like Davina Suki could go there. But no, maybe that looks too pink. And I kind of want, I kind of already have an idea for there. I'm kind of thinking Luxy Wicked Witch for there. Yeah, I think that would work. So the other options for smack dab in the middle, Glaminate Tricks Majestic. It could do, but visually I feel like right next to Moby, it doesn't look the most interesting. I know they're very different on the eyes. I don't know. I could see it in use adding something a little different, more of like a normal neutral shimmer to the palette, but I don't know if it looks the best in the center. I don't know if it's like exciting enough or, or something. We could do Cleona Bloodline. I guess I've been doing all my Cleona shadows on the side, but that might look too rosy in the center. Yeah, and it looks really rosy in the swatch. I've been meaning to use this one, but I feel like it's not the right one for this. It really changes the feeling. We have Solder from Cleona, but I feel like this one might be too rosy also. And I feel like the dark era might already be kind of represented in the palette. It does look pretty, but ugh, it would be so different. It looks so red in the camera. I mean, it would work for the center if I wanted to be like, ooh, blood. Because I did see some comments that there should be a red for like that insane pop of red that you get. I cannot picture it. I don't know if the videos that I watched about Twilight included the insane pops of red, but that's what people said. And this would be a way to, like, have a pop of red in, like, a stormy way. 
because it doesn't always look red at every angle. So I guess of the three, this might be the one I'm leaning towards the most so far, but I'm still hoping to find something that seems better. Tiramisu, I know we already talked about that. I just don't think it's strong enough to be the center shade. And Thalassic, we also already talked about. It would work, but it's not exciting me for it. I feel like my expectations for the center shade might be too high, but we still have a couple other options. Abracadabra from Luxy. It could do, but again, not excited. Menagerie Ink Defense. This one might be darker than I want the center to be. And also, I feel like there might be some crossover between this and Vault, but Vault is way more interesting. So I think that disqualifies this. And what about this Adept one? I like the shadow, but I feel like it's more of a standalone thing. Like, I wouldn't mix and match it in use with other colors in the palette. It would just be, like, all over my lid. Which, I mean, could be interesting. It's, like, the easiest way to get this, like, Twilight vibe and go, you know? But it just doesn't feel quite exciting enough for the center. Okay, Encelade is from Terra Moons. I, I, I was banking on this one, but I almost feel like it makes the whole palette look too teal. It's almost, like, not grounded enough anymore. It is pretty. It would add something pretty and different. It has the teal. It has, like, this purple to it. These are all the swatches I just swatched, by the way. All gorgeous. But I just don't like how that looks in the center. Does that mean the winner's solder? It's, like, the only one I didn't put out of the running. And that's kind of a cool placement for it. It's, like, the heart of the palette. Literally right in the center of the palette. Yeah. I think it's got to be that. Okay, moment of truth. We're going to swatch this bad boy out. On Dupe That's Instagram page, they posted these super gorgeous swatches of the palette, but I have a feeling ours is going to be better. Shine by SD Prize. ColourPop Chic Happens. Terra Moon's Haze of the Moon. Davina Mystic Moon Pie. Shine by SD and Glam Smitty Lothlorien. Dandelions Co. Shortbread, Luxy Morning Rain, Menagerie Tidepool, Cleona Chandelier, Davina Earthshine, Luxy Jeepers Creepers, Pretties for Your Face Moby, Cleona Solder, Sydney Grace Keep It Fun, Cleona Carving, Luxy Wicked Witch, Terra Moon's Bellatrix, Terra Moon's M51, Cleona Vault, Pretties for Your Face A Burr, Depotted Colourpop Matte, Colourpop Noche, Terra Moon Shattered Stars, Terra Moon's Atlantis, Shine by SD and Glam Smitty Mirkwood. I do think all of the tones, especially of the shimmers, are like distinct and interesting and I just really like a palette of this size because I feel like I could go into this color selection and do a different look every day. You know, with like the smaller palettes, there's like a couple vibes you can do. And if you're going to do a green look, you're going to have to use that one green shimmer. This, you could do a green look so many different ways. You could do a blue look, neutral looks, reddish looks, warm looks, purpley looks, more colorful looks, like mixing all of the colors together. So I really like that. I was going to say I could see why a brand would do a smaller palette because people who are less into these tones might think it's repetitive, but I'm like looking at it now and I'm like, I don't think it's repetitive. There's just multiple options in the same depth, but the options are distinct. Yeah, beautiful. I like the different textures in here too. I'm excited to have like some satins going on. Overall, really excited about this. I think it's time for us to switch back over to my face. Okay, let me zoom you in and I'll show you what I have on my eyes. So I wanted to do something a little bit outside of my comfort zone without making it so like intense or, or deep that I don't feel like myself in it. So I started with the smallest amount of Dandelions Cosmetics Shortbread just to have like a little bit of a transition color. I did Menagerie Tide Pool just a little bit over here. I did this Depotted Colourpop Green a little bit over there. 
The same thing with Terra Moon's Atlantis up here. And then I went in with carving all over my eye. I started in the center and kind of blended outwards because I didn't want it to be so intense on top of any of the mats. For my lower lash line, I used Luxy Morning Rain, and then I deepened it up with the smallest amount of the ColourPop Green on the outer edge. And then I used this Shine by SD one prize for my inner corner and for my brow bone. I kind of surprised myself with just how much I like it. I especially like something about carving right next to Tide Pool. I feel like I want to do a look in the future with like just those two, maybe layering them or something. I don't know, but I'm feeling inspired. And especially because I used all of the different colorful matte pops in this eye look, I feel like this eye look really encapsulates the vibe of the palette. Even the fact that we have this like shifty one in the center that has that strong reddishness to it, the, the like warm base in carving is giving me that vibe also. Cool. I'm so excited to use this palette more and kind of like explore all the different directions that this can take me in. I feel like I love cool tones as long as I have a transition color that I'm comfortable with. And this palette like is that. I have my transition color. I have a couple other transition colors to mess around with a variety of beautiful shimmers, a couple options for inner corner shades. Like I'm surprised by how perfect this palette is for me, but I also think this palette is way more perfect for me than it would have been if I had purchased the ColourPop one because this is made up of shadows that I already hand chose and decided to bring into my collection. And I hadn't thought before doing this that I would have enough shadows to make up an entire palette to like really capture the essence of the Twilight palette. But duping is always the way. If you have any sort of collection of eyeshadows, I definitely recommend it. There's times where like I don't want to dupe it because I want to just like live in La La Land <laughs> and go purchase the new fun thing. But that the funness that I would have gotten if I had purchased the ColourPop one would not be as sustainable as the funness that I'm getting from this. Sustainable in the way that like I'm enjoying this more because I already have this. I don't have to wait for it to like be shipped to me and have any mystery about the formulas or anything. It's sustainable in the way that like I literally already have it and then when I'm done with it these can just re-emerge themselves back into my collection and we can forget this ever happened if we want to. And even if you don't have a collection of indie single shadows that's like vast or, or any collection at all. You could also go through palettes and just like swatch it out in your arm and create a look using a shade from this palette, a shade from this palette, and a shade from this palette. Because as much fun as it is to get new stuff, the, the fun is dampened when new things are coming out every day. And when you don't know truly how much enjoyment the new product will bring you in your life. So yeah, I want to thank Catherine again for suggesting we do this video as a collab video. I know she was already planning on doing like a duping palette of this video, but it hadn't even like occurred to me. I just wanted to like talk about it a little bit. But after she suggested it, I was like, yes, <laughs> like I've been so excited to film this ever since we talked about it. So Catherine, thank you so much for collabing with me for suggesting this. As I said in the beginning, her video is going to be linked down below as soon as I have the link available for her video. And I really suggest you go watch it to get two perspectives out of the same prompt. That's going to be everything for today. If you're not subscribed, I hope you will consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. There's always way more makeup content on the way. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.